What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilla, your secret million, and the villain for the trilogy, and we are back on Suke Hime. Um, last episode was the prologue. We did the thing with the thing. Okay, I know niggas got sliced up. We, uh, we, we, we ran out the hospital because we got some weird superpower. We talked to this lady. Uh, we sliced a tree and she slapped the shit out of us. And then we, uh, she gave us some glasses and was like, I fucked with you, little nigga. And then we was like, damn, I fucked with you too. And then we never saw each other again. That was the end of the prologue. So let's see, let's get, let's start back where we left off. Chapter one, Inversion Impulse One. First day, October 21st, Thursday. Oh shit, autumn. Autumn. The last traces of summer were disappearing today. A Thursday halfway through October. This is the last day when I, Tono Shiki, return home. It's been eight years since I left. Shiki, hurry! You're going to be late for school! I hear Keiko's, Keiko's voice floating in from the kitchen. Alright, I'm leaving! I place my hands together in the room that was mine at the Arimas up until now. I'm going. Thanks for letting me live with you for these past eight years. Clap, clap! I fold my hands together in prayer. Then grabbing my only bag, I leave the room that had become so familiar. I walk through the entrance of the Arima's house and turn to face it. Cheeky. Keiko will come to the door to see me off, calls my name somberly. Is that, is that, oh, that's a woman. Okay, my fault. I walk through the entrance to the Arima's house and I turn to face it. Cheeky. Keiko who had come to the door to see me off, called my name somberly. See you later. Take care, Mom. What a strange thing to say. I won't be coming back. Never again will I pass through this door as a member of the Arima family. Thanks for looking after me. Please, give my regards to Father, too. Keiko simply nods. Eight years. The eyes of the person who had been my mother looked so sad. I don't think I've ever seen her like that before. I'm sure it'll be hard for you at the Tono's house. Please, watch yourself. Your body is weak, you mustn't overdo it. I'll be okay. After eight years, I'm just as healthy as anyone else. I'm a lot tougher than I look. I suppose you're right. But the Tono's are different from everyone else. I'm worried they'll be too much for you. I know what Keiko means. My home for the day fourth will be a mansion, an uncommon sight in this day and age. Not only is the house amazing, but the family itself is highly respected. It's said they hold significant investments in many corporations. To top things off, it's my true home. The Arimas have only been looking after me. But it's already decided. Yeah, it's something that's already decided. Alright, I'll be heading off then. Thanks for taking care of me. I repeat those words one last time and turn back to... I repeat those words one last time and turn my back on the household I had grown so accustomed to over these past eight years. <sighs> I leave the Arimus house and start walking to school with a heavy heart. Eight years ago, I recovered from a serious injury that normally would have meant death. Then I was entrusted to the Arimus, a family branching off from the Tono family. I lived with my real parents at the Tono mansion up until I was nine. Then I lived with the Arimus for eight years until now. I'm second year of high school. I lived a normal life as, as an adopted son. From the time I met, from the time I met Sensei, those special circumstances Sensei told me about as never part, as she parted, never happened, and the glasses hid the lines from me as long as I wore them. The life of Tono Shiki was a peaceful one. It meandered along gently until a few days ago, the day when the head of the Tono family sent word to me. Return to the Tono Mansion, little nigga. The very family that until now had shunned me. Ah, I sighed again. To be perfectly honest, even before the accident, I had never gotten along with the Tono household. Maybe as a kid, I was never, I never liked the formality demanded by the family. Perhaps that's why I said nothing when the old man told me I was gonna live with the Ari, but I think it turned out well. I got along with my adopted parents, Keiko and Fumio. It was as if they were my real parents. I lived a normal life in the loving family of the Arimas like a real son, just like I had always wished. 
I don't regret living there, except for one thing. My little sister, one year younger than me, remained behind with the tunnels. Akiha, I bet she hates me now. It would only be natural. She had to live in that mansion all by herself under the constant supervision of that hard-headed old man. I could easily imagine what Akiha thought of me, the one who escaped. I let it out of the side. I can't help it. It's gonna, what's gonna happen will happen. Today after school, I'll return to my true home. Lord knows what'll occur. But for now, I've got, to, got more pressing problems. My watch shows 745. Homeroom starts at eight o'clock sharp. And anyone who isn't by class by eight is marked as late. Clutching my bag, I start to sprint towards school. I'm already tired. I am not built for visual novels. <laughs> I managed to make it to school in less than 10 minutes. I entered from the back gate, accomplishing a feat that would bring the track scouts running if they knew. Come to think of it, today's also the last day I'll come through the back gate. The Arima and Tono house are on opposite sides of the school, with the Arimas being behind while the Tono is in the front. Obviously, I'll be coming through the front gate in the future. And I quite like the atmosphere back here, too. For some reason, the back gate at our school isn't really popular. Only 10 people or so, myself included, actually use it. It's quiet and pretty devoid of people day or night. Clang! Clink, clink, clang! Like I said, pretty quiet. The sound of a hammer mixed with a distant bird singing reached my ears. Hammering, huh? Clang! Clink! Clong! A half rhythmic rhythmic ringing comes from one corner of this courtyard. What is that? Homeroom begins in less than 10 minutes. I don't have time to stop and find out, but I am pretty curious. Right. Oh, shit. I forgot this shit got choices to it. Hold on. Let me let me save. Let's check it out. The source of the, Hold on. I'm I'm embodying my 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 um Hey, that one, that one ancestor that was white and a slave master, you know that one? I'm, em I'm embodying his spirit right now, and I'm finna check out the strange noise. The source of the noise soon becomes apparent as I walk towards the courtyard. A female student is crouching in the middle of the tree-lined path, working with a hammer and nails. Oh, by the way, I know that this has routes to it, right? And the way that I play on my first playthrough, I don't like to just follow a guide and do this and that, whatever it says. I like to just kind of, you know, do what I do and see how it turns out. So by the time y'all see this video, I probably would have already gone through whatever route this is going to be. You know, like I probably would have already finished my first playthrough. So just letting y'all know. What is she doing? There are only a few minutes left into homeroom. Maybe she doesn't have a watch? At that moment, that's the best I could come up with. Still, to not notice and then just ignore her would be somewhat cruel. I approach her unhurriedly, trying not to surprise her and speak. Oh, she looks like a sweet young lady. Yo, homeroom is starting soon. Huh? The squatting girl raises her face. The ribbon on her uniform displays the color of a third year. The older student looks at me while holding her hammer. Um, her gaze through those glasses is so direct, I feel like I'm being pulled in. Her serious eyes makes me want to apologize for bothering her. <laughs> Sorry! The splint she was facing is rotten beyond use. Come to think of it, our school's rear courtyard is in a terrible state of despair. Oh, fucking hell! Disrepair! The splints are neglected and the flower beds untended. Apparently the teachers intended for the students to conduct a big cleanup at the end of the year, so the maintenance men have done nothing since summer. I take in the situation with a single glance. The girl with the hammer is repairing the broken down splints, paying it no mind to the fact that her tiny uniform is being dirty. She has sweat on her brow and it looks like she's been swinging her hammer in the most serious manner. But as far as I know, there's nobody in charge of repairing public property at this school. Um, what is it? The older student asked, adjusting her crooked glasses. I want glasses. I always wanted glasses. 
have 2020 vision, so I don't need them. But I've always wanted glasses. I think they look cool. Uh, it's nothing. I was wondering what you were doing. As you can see, I'm in the middle of fixing the splints. Yeah, I, I can see that. That's just, it's not what I meant. I was wondering why you're doing something like this. Won't the maintenance people take care of it anyway? Ha <laughs> you're fucking stupid. No, the older student laughs to hide her embarrassment. I'm the kind of person who can't stand seeing a mess like this. Can't leave them alone. Soon as though she's repairing the splints because she just couldn't let him stay that way. What an odd senpai. That's why you're fixing it on your own? I mean, if you don't like the mess, why not just avoid coming here? Well, my classroom is over there. Senpai points to the second floor classroom facing the courtyard. My seat is next to the window, so it's easy for me to see the courtyard. Well, usually I just bear it, but when I took my seat today, I was surprised to see all the splints in the area were broken. Senpai's face clouded as if to say, isn't that terrible? Apparently she's upset, although she doesn't look seriously angry. You know what they say, strike while the iron's hot and all. I borrowed the tools from the office and decided to fix them myself. And so the explanation ends. <clears throat> Making a bow, Senpai returns to hammering the nails. Alright, I understand all that, but how about we leave it here for now? Homeroom is less than five minutes, and if it's this bad, won't the school get around to facing you pretty soon? No, nigga! Gripping her hammer, the senpai with glasses shakes her head furiously. I won't be able to concentrate with a garden like this, even if I go to class. It'll just sound like nonsense to me, and then the teacher will say, Hey you, what are you staring at? I'll get yelled at for sure! Senpai continues to grip the hammer while she emphasizes her point. Well, I suppose the teacher would be upset if you kept looking outside. He would, wouldn't he? That's why I have to do it now. With that, Senpai begins her repairs once again, clumsily hammering away. She's obviously not used to using a hammer. Clank, clank, rings the hammer as it hits the wood. By the looks of it, there isn't just one or two broken splints. I can't begin to guess how long it'll take her to repair all of them on her own. The bell begins to ring. Looks like first period started. I give up. Considering things have gotten to this point, I sit down and silently begin to help repairing the splints. I got you, little one. Once I began to help, I quickly, quickly realized mending them isn't that difficult after all. Although the older student is not used to making repairs, she's quite skillful anyway. She's already gotten the hang of it, and work is proceeding at a brisk pace. Senpai's movements are quick and sharp. I enjoy watching her. She really is quite clever. Before I know it, there's only one split left to repair. 30 minutes have passed. I can't stay here any longer, and only one more will be no problem for Senpai. Well, I'll be going. I stand up and dust off my pants. The student with the glasses also stands up and begins to stare at me. Where the fuck you think you going, nigga? You better, you better, you, you better finish the damn job. Boy, I beat your ass. <laughs> oh, no, no, because why is she looking like that, though? Why she look like she finna whoop my ass? <laughs> she look like she finna beat my ass, bro. Why she look like she finna beat my ass? <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, shit, she mad. Come to think of it, just who is she? I hadn't given it any thought because of what I was doing. When I stopped to consider her, I realized she is quite beautiful. She is quite beautiful. I like this art style. It's rough, but it's it's rough, but like in a very in a nice way. I like it. So when this good looking would be known by every male student, they'd be talking about a third year beauty. Uh, I, I have to go. Don't work too hard, senpai. Oh, okay. She's not. I, right, I. Right, she's chilling. She's chilling. She's not about to beat my ass. Thank God. She gives an obedient nod. Even though she's older than me, it's almost like dealing with someone younger. Thank you for helping me. I'm glad you did. She makes a quick bow. She's such a sweetheart! She's a sweetheart! Oh my goodness, she's a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart, she's a sweetheart. I'll be sure to come say hello during lunch. Ah, oh, don't forget to wash your hands, Tono. You too, senpai. 
With that, I wave my hand and leave, and then I come to wonder, how the fuck does she know my name? Wait, huh? Have I met you before, senpai? Huh? Senpai cries out of surprise and mischievously puts on a depressed face. Oh no, you've forgotten about me? Forgotten? No, I don't think so. If I ever met a beautiful woman like her, there's no, there's no fucking way I forget that shit. Uh, she looks at me reproach, reproachfully. Those eyes, I'm sure I remember them from somewhere, don't I? From the think of it, we had exchanged greetings once or twice before, hadn't we? Shield, how the fuck do you say that? CL, shield, sile. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say seal. Seal senpai, isn't it? Apprehensively, I suggest her name. Yes, I'm glad you remember. You seem like the type of space I don't forget, Tono. I don't think I spaced out, but there's nothing I can do about the fact that I forgot. <sighs> Unremembering ass nigga. See you later then. Oh, see you later then. Sorry for keeping you. Seal senpai bows again. I watch her go then start to walk toward the school building. The second I enter, the teacher shoots me because I was late for class. When I reach my class, it's already the break at the first period. I slip into the room while everyone's busy talking. My desk is the window seat in the very back row, so I sneak there without drawing any attention. When attendance is taken in second period, everyone will probably say, Hey, when the fuck did Tono get here? It's a strange quirk in an otherwise dull class. But I guess that plan won't work this time. Who the fuck is this? This ugly ass nigga. But I guess that plan won't work this time. Yo, truant boy. It's totally unlike you to be late. I sigh. Feels like reality is being hammered back into me after the pleasant time I spent with Senpai. What was that sour face of yours? Being late when I'm actually on time. What do you think you're doing? Hey, listen. Um, oh, hey, listen, I'm not coming to school for your sake, you know? What? But I'm coming to school for your sake. That's so unfair. Words fail me. I wonder, like I have many times before, how I ended up knowing this guy. His hair dyed orange, that's red. His ears pierced. His vicious glare that screams he'll pick a fight with anyone, anytime. And he's wearing a rebellious clothes. He looked like down. I forget his name. Was it Sanosuke? Was his name Sanosuke? Yeah, Sanosuke Sa Sagara. Sagara Sanosuke from Samurai X. That's what he looked like. Inui Adehiko is the only free-spirited outlaw in our university-oriented high school. We've been better enemies since middle school, right? If you make a carefree phrase like that in front of your rival, you better be prepared for some dicking. I mean, for some trouble. In any case, Arihiko is a loud guy. Yo, morning Tono. Before I knew it, everyone in class was looking my way and greeting me. Shut up, Arihiko. You're ruining my chance to slip into class unnoticed. And why am I your rival anyway? Plenty of other tough guys around, so stop bothering me. Well, he still owes me close to 10,000 yen from middle school, so I guess that does make him my enemy. Boy, you better pay up! I don't play about my money, I get you whack, pussy! Why are you only mean to me, Tono? You're like a saint to everyone else. Bro, button your shirt up, I wanna see that bird chest. It's not fair. You just figured that out? Life's not fair. You really are only mean to me. I didn't try particularly hard to be cold to Arihiko. That's just the kind of relationship we have. I hate this nigga. By the way, Arihiko, What's a chronically late night owl who never shows up until second period you're doing here in home room? It's a little... No, no, it's very odd. Ha! 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 I was thinking that too. I guess being at school on time is just for when, it, when, when I happen to wake up early. I won't comment on your hobbies, but what I'm asking is why you woke up early. Why I woke up early? Ah. I guess it's because I can't stay out late since all the fuss started, so I actually get, go to sleep at night now. You heard the stories about those serial killings, haven't you? Fucking hell. Serial killings? I see. 
Come to think of it, I did not hear no shit about that. Why am I just not hearing about it? I'm the one playing the game. I should know about this. I'm playing the game. I should know about this. I gotta make decisions. What if they gave me a, what if they gave me a decision to to, to, to the fucking to, 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 to walk into the street and I didn't know about the serial killings and I and I got my dick bit off? Like, what, what? come on now, Sukihime, lock the fuck in. Come to think of it, I did hear something like that. I feel a tinge of regret at needing Arahiko to remind me. For the past two or three days, I have been debating whether or not to return to the Tono household, so I completely lost touch with the news. What was that again? They've been given some really nasty name, like freakish serial killings or something. That is lame as hell. If I was a serial killer and they named, and they named my crimes freakish serial killer, I mean, I understand my name used to be Freakish Z, Z to Freak, but like, fuck that. If they named it Freakish Serial Killing, like, I'ma kill that nigga that named it because that's lame as fuck. Like, we got, like, we got Zodiac Killings, bro. Like, we got all types of hard ass names. You wanna give me that lame ass shit? There's more to it. So far, all the victims have been young girls. It's always fucking young girls. No, don't do that though. Don't fuck young girls. But it's always young girls that are getting murdered by serial killers in these things. And, and like anime and manga stories and shit is always young girls. A victim was only two days ago. And to top it all off, they were all, oh wait, fuck, what the fuck, oh, shit, fuck. What happened to them again? I can't remember, bro. Ah. Arihiko tilts his head in contemplation. I'm an idiot for asking him. Yeah, I remember now, I remember now. All the victims had cross-shaped slashes on their throats. Yeah, that's what it was. Who the fuck is this? She's pretty. No, Inui. Everyone who was killed lost a lot of blood. Oh yeah, that was it. How did you mistake that? That's two different things. Said it was some kind of modern day vampire or something. <laughs> vampire, fuck out of here, nigga. You sure know a lot about this Yumi, Yumi, Yumi Zuka. I'ma just call it Zuka. I'm gonna call it Yumi. Not really. It's happening in this town, so it's in the news. You'd remember it even if you didn't want to. I see. Thought it was happening in the neighboring town, but I guess it moved down here. Well, anyway, that's what happened. Even I wouldn't be going in the streets at night with a killer walking around. And I'm literally Sanosuke. That's why I've been waking up at seven lately. What, that's it? Having a good reason doesn't make a good story. Where's the fun in that? I sit down dealing with Ari. I sit down while dealing with Arihiko. Man, you're cold. I mean, man, you're cold. What, did you collapse with anemia already this morning? I'm all right, thanks for asking. If I was anemic 24 hours a, 24 hours a day, I'd be dead by now. Yeah, you right. If you say you're okay, then I guess you're okay. The bell rings while we're talking. Hey, class about to begin. Hurry up and get back to your seats. Yeah, all right. By the way, we'll have lunch today in the cafeteria set up on the roof. I invited a special guest, so I look forward to it. I can't tell who's talking. With a scheming laugh, Arahiko returns to his seat. See you later, Tono. Yeah. Sorry for keeping you, Yumi. Her light footsteps tap across the floor as she returns to her desk, but... Still a mystery to me why she joined our conversation. Are y'all not friends? She's just our classmate. I guess they're not friends. It's lunchtime. Now then, where should I eat lunch? When are we gonna eat lunch with our friends? Hold on. Do this. Save it. When are we gonna eat lunch with our friends? Let's uh, let's let's uh, let's go into the hallway and think about it. During lunchtime, the hall is packed. Students head into the cafeteria. During lunchtime, the hall is packed. Students head to the cafeteria to their favorite places. Lunch is at hand. Caught in the flow of people, I contemplate whether I should go to the cafeteria or the store. I'm somewhat taken aback of my own leisure. If I have time to waste, it'd be better to go to the cafeteria where Arahiko is. I begin walking towards the cafeteria. On the way there, a familiar face waves and runs up to me. Oh, it's you! I like her, she's cool. Thank goodness, I've been looking for you, Tono. 
Oh, Shield. Hello. Feel embarrassed for some reason and return her unusual greeting. Oh, don't look cute like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's gonna make me wanna go down your route. I don't, I, I wanna, I, I just wanna see where this goes, okay? Yes, hello. Well, we've already met once today, so I guess it's not proper to say hello. A small smile floats on the senpai's face as if she found something amusing. Uh, yeah, now that you mention it, I guess you're right. I avert my eyes and give a lukewarm reply, becoming increasingly embarrassed. I wonder. I should be used to speaking to senpai like this, but for some reason I'm getting embarrassed. Tona? Do you have some urgent business? You seem a bit unsettled. No, nothing like that. I don't, I don't, but for some reason, her every move feels unfamiliar. I can't calm down. Oh, I think I'm horny. I want her, I want her! It's nothing. More importantly, Senpai, you said you were looking for me. You need me for something? Well, I wanted to thank you for this morning, so I was looking for you. For this morning? Ah, you mean in the courtyard? Of course. Sorry to ask, but are you gonna have lunch? I sigh. Well, people usually eat lunch at this time, dumbass. Great, then we can eat together. I'll treat you as thanks for this morning. Let's go to the cafeteria. Huh? Senpai smiles. Grabbing my wrist, he starts to walk. <sighs> it's strange enough for a third year like Senpai to walk down the second year hall, but this attracts even more attention. The gazes of the students in the hall fall upon Senpai and me and a murmur of conversation starts. Wait, 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 just a second. It's all right, you don't have to. I quickly shake her off my arm. I only did what I did this morning on a whim. No need for you to thank me. I draw back from Senpai, well aware of how flushed my face is. There's no need to be so reserved. Work should be rewarding. So please, let me treat you. Senpai grabs hold of my arm again, this time with a vice grip as if she's gonna rip it off if I try to fight back. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, I just couldn't say that I'm embarrassed to be with her because we stand out so much. Come on, there won't be any seats left if we don't hurry. I'll listen to the details of I'll listen to the details after we get to the cafeteria. Senpai starts walking, pulling my arm with a tug. Any further questions would bring more stares from the people around us in the hall. I don't know what Senpai is planning, but I peacefully accompany her to the cafeteria. Almost all the seats in the cafeteria are taken. I spent about 10 minutes in the hallway, first spaced out, then talking with Senpai. So empty ca empty cafeteria seats are pretty much non-existent. I'll stand in line, Tono, so please, go get some seats. Is there any food you don't like? If there is, now's the time to let me know. Nah, there isn't. I'm not picky with food. Very well. I won't take long. Senpai lines up with everyone else. She's my only choice is to obediently accept that she'll be treating me. But there aren't any seats left. I look around the bustling cafeteria. You can't even find two seats at this hour, let alone two seats to get there! I sigh. There, plain as day, a table with not only two, not three, but four unoccupied seats. There's only one student sitting at the table. It appears he noticed me while I was looking around for a seat. Yo, Tono! The student vigorously waved his hand as my dear classmate with dyed orange hair. My head hurts. But there isn't anywhere else to sit. I have no choice but to return the wave and walk towards the table where my friend is sitting. You're late. I told you to hurry because I invited a special guest today. What the hell have you been up to? Arihiko begins to complain as soon as we're face to face. Yeah, come to think of it, you did, but I did not give a fuck. So who's it? Who is it? Huh, about that. She promised me yesterday she'd come, but she declined this morning. She said she had someone she wanted to thank or something, so she'd be busy this much time. Arihiko sighs as he, as he eats his Chikara Udon. Talking about Seal Senpai. Someone she wanted to thank. Those words catch my attention. Arihiko, that special guest wouldn't happen to be a third year student, would she? Whoa! Arihiko's body jumps in shock. A rather energetic girl wearing glasses? Whoa! Arihiko begins quivering. The student at the table, the student at the table around us stand up as if to make a fast escape. 
are, are you psychic? No. I'm psychic. <laughs> Alright, Nico points at me fearfully. No, that doesn't mean I'm psychic. It... Sorry to keep you waiting. Good to see you fun to see, Tona. There. Senpai arrives with a smile carrying a silver tray. Arahiko's eyes are wide open in surprise. Huh? In in Inui? Oh, my fault. Huh? Inui? What a coincidence. Still smiling, Senpai takes her seat. Ah! Arahiko Ari gives a choked response. Here you go, Tono. Please, eat until you're full. Even after all this time, I still can't shake off her smile. Uh, uh, Alright. In that case, thanks for the food. Taking Arahiko's dumbfounded stare in stride, I sit down. Senpai sits in front of me while Arahiko sits beside me. Itadakimasu! Putting my hands together with a clap, I look down at the tray Senpai brought. And on the menu is curry rice, curry rice, and curry udon. I don't get it. Uh, uh, senpai? Yeah? What is it, Tono? About this, what's going on? What do you mean? It's lunch, isn't it? What else does it look like? Stop fucking looking at me like that, red hair. What else you say? All I see is curry. Yes, it's curry. Senpai laughs happily. The problem is, they, they all look like curry. There's three dishes. Of course. You're a boy, so you eat a lot. I'll have just one, so please take whatever you like. O okay. A in that case, I'll take the curry rice and curry udon. The other choice is hell. Make sure you finish it, Tono. After all, you aren't picky with your food, are you? Are you being petty? Or is she stupid? I can't tell. There isn't a shred of antagonism in Senpai's smile, nor is it some kind of joke. So she's just stupid! She's just stupid! She truly had good intentions. Yes. Itadakimasu. I dig into the curry rice with a spoon in despair. And then... Tono! From beside me came the cry of a dead man being reborn. How long are you gonna annoy your dear best friend? Arahiko's elbow sinks into the side of my stomach with a thud, breaking 12 of my ribs. Eh? Inui, do you know Tono? Do I know him? We've been best friends since middle school. Love the guy. My best friend hits the table with a bang for emphasis. Really? The person who helped me this morning was Tono. Oh, yeah. If you had told me his name, I would have brought him here. And so, did this guy do something for you? Yes, he helped me fix my splints. Uh, he helped you fix your shin splints? Arahiko frowns suspiciously. Uh oh. Well, I guess you would consider helping someone fix their shin splints a bit odd. No, fixing splints! Please, don't make me angry when I'm eating! I'll beat the fuck out of you! Jill Senpai gets angry. She seems to be someone you can never tire of watching. Fixing splints. Ah, the splints in the courtyard. You are at it again. You sure enjoy that kind of thing, Senpai, but you'd better be bet but you'd be better off if you gave up. Keep doing things like that and teacher will start expecting you to do them. That's alright, I do it because I enjoy it. You shouldn't talk about the teachers like that though, you know? They really care about the school. No the fuck they don't. I'm finding it difficult to follow the conversation. Senpai, don't tell me you normally do that sort of thing. Yeah. Didn't you know, Tono? Seal is so handy when they call it a shadow president of the student council. No, I was asking Senpai, nigga, back off. Wait, never mind. What on earth is this shadow president? Is she strong? Yeah. She's quite something. Totally unlike the student council, which is the student council in name only. She's a third year who saw many problems for you if you ask her. Even got a fan club amongst the first years. And if something happens, the teachers all rely on her. Isn't a single teacher who complains about what Senpai does. Arahiko speaks with pride as if she was actually talking about himself. Wow, Seo Senpai sure is amazing. Even the teachers rely on you. 
I look at Senpai and press. Ah, yes. Thank you. Senpai turns bright red and bears. Ah, that's so adorable! That's so adorable! Oh my goodness! Senpai turn, turn Fuck! Senpai, fuck! I can't read! Oh man! Senpai, Senpai turn- No! No! Senpai church! I said it right that time! Why'd I get pissed? Senpai churns! Senpai churns or cherry rice! Cherry rice, nigga! I need a break. <laughs> I need a break. I need to rest. I need to rest. Hey. Yeah. I'll take care of the house like a good boy. Make sure you scratch behind the ears. That one probably makes me really horny. Like if I had a, a like a, a, a baddie, right? And she was scratching me behind my ears, calling me a good boy. I probably like that a lot. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Senpai turns bright red and bare. Ah. Fuck up already fucking up. Ah uh, yes, um, thank you. Senpai turns bright red and bears. Senpai churns her curry rice with her spoon. I guess it's a hide her embarrassment, but it reminds me of the enemy I have to face. Curry rice by itself is fine, but after that it wastes curry udon. My doctor warned me not to eat too much, but I don't think there's anything else in this situation that I can do. So I started to dig into the rice. Having decided I'm gonna try and finish one dish quickly. I direct all my concentration to the rice. Meanwhile, Senpai and Arihiko began talking about their own homes or something. I already know that Arihiko doesn't live with his parents, but it seems Senpai is also living by herself. Apparently, Senpai's apartment is quite close to the school. It's roughly between Main Street and the park. So, Tano, where do you live? Huh? I silently eat my food when Senpai, peering at me, asks a completely unrelated question. No, that shit was very related. Where? Why do you ask? You already heard where I live, right, Tono? I think it's unfair if I don't know where your house is. I'm trying to pull up, gang. Maybe slide on the ops. Unfair. You worry about the strangest things, Senpai. It's not strange. If I don't know where you live, I can't visit you if something happens, right? I stopped eating the rice. I have a feeling that something has been said that I should that I should be jubilant about. Visit? You mean you'd come and visit me if I catch a cold or something? No, I wouldn't. I don't have any plans to visit at the moment. Smiling, Senpai replies instantly as if stating the obvious. I'm about to say, are we that tight? It seems like the euphoria is premature. Senpai doesn't seem to have any unusual intention. I see now. That's just the way she is. Oh, dude thought he was gonna break some backs. I <laughs> thought he was finna break a back. Thought he was finna knock some ankles loose. I guess I have to tell you. Yeah, my house is nearby too, only a 40 minute walk. There's a residential district on top of the hill, right? Just go a little further and you're there. Oh yeah. You're moving today, right? Arahiko strikes his hand on the desk like, ow, oh, that hurts. Senpai tilts her head slightly. Moving? Tono, are you a transfer student? Huh? Senpai asks a strange question. Arahiko meets my gaze. Uh, I've been here since the first year. We've known each other since then, right? Why are you asking if I'm a transfer student now? But Tono, you moved yesterday, so... What? Moving doesn't automatically make you a transfer student. I'm just changing my address, not my school. Come on, use your head. Until now, I've been living with some relatives in the neighboring town. I'm just going back to my real home, that's all. Senpai wears a look of surprise, seems to understand. I see, you've only changed your residence. So now you live in the outskirts of town. Yeah. It's that colorful place on top of the hill. I'm moving there today. Could that possibly be the Tono Mansion? Senpai asks with some hesitation. The western style on top of the hill is probably seen as something special by residents of this town. I haven't been there in eight years, but even in my memories, the Tono Mansion was ridiculously large. Yeah, that's right. I don't think it's the right place for me either, but it's too late now that I'm done moving. You don't seem too happy about it. It's neither good nor bad. I don't quite understand it either. Well, even if it is your house, it's been eight years, right? 
I can understand if you're feeling strange. It'll probably feel like someone else's house for a while. I wonder if that's so. I haven't gone back yet, so I don't know. Well, I'm a bit relaxed since I've always got a refuge at your place. Yeah, right. My house is no refuge of yours. When you come over during the holidays, my sister treats you better than me. That's probably because you're a horrible person. But I refrain from telling him that and the answers are preventing the conversation from getting any worse. To be honest, it's not pleasant having my home raised as a topic of conversation. Wow, oh, that's such an adorable sprite. That's so adorable. She's so adorable. Wow, you two certainly get along well. Senpai peers at Akihiko and me. Uh, I Akihiko, Arahiko. No way. Me and Tano would never help each other, no matter how much trouble we were in. In other words, we're enemies. Mademoiselle. Arahiko says in a fed up tone. I'm getting pretty fed up myself with the pseudo foreignerisms too. But your relationship is so good that Tono stayed over your house before, right? Doesn't that mean you get along really well? You're wrong, senpai. No, you're wrong! That damn Tono was too reserved toward his parents. And he'd come over my place every vacation. He's reserved toward them because they're taking care of him. That's why he comes over to my place, where we conveniently have an empty room. Since he looks pretty decent, my sister took a liking to him and he shamelessly comes to stay with us without paying a cent. Arahiko's fist trembles as if to say, UNFORGIVABLE! Taking care of Tono. Ah. Uh, Arahiko clamps a hand over his mouth. Sorry. Should have thought before I spoke. It's cool. You didn't say anything bad. I continue to eat my food without looking at Arahiko. I'm totally gonna stab his ass. Really? She looks like she's about to whoop my ass, bro. Are you mad at me? Like, she looks like she's about to just hit me with the meanest right hook. Don't look at me like that. It's scary. Really? Yeah, you're right. You complain about that, you'll be in for some punishment. All right, he go nice to himself with a grievance. An overwhelming optimism is something I am truly envious of. I'm sorry, Tono. Um, did you not get along with your previous family? No, that's not it. He has no problem with the Arimas. Oh, the Arimas was the family who took care of him. They're really nice people, and from what I can tell, they're a happy family. Even so, he refused to be their adopted kid, and he escaped to my place every vacation. Jeez, just what were you not satisfied with anyway? There's nothing I wasn't satisfied about. It's just that I've received so much from them already. I didn't want to be a further burden on them. I finished my rice without reply. Now only the curry udon is left. It's okay, senpai. Sorry for making you listen to something so boring. Uh, not at all. I'm sorry for asking you something so strange. Senpai forces herself to look cheerful. The topic might be fine for a long time friend like Arihiko, but a complex matter like this would only be troublesome for senpai. I uh, prove my point, senpai sits there uneasily. Ah, uh, senpai. Sorry, but I've got something to talk about. Sorry, senpai, but I've got something private to talk to Tano about. Would you mind leaving? Fuck out of here. Arahiko has no problem making such an offensive request. Isn't that phrase an indirect, no, a direct say of saying, we don't want you, senpai, get lost? You idiot. What do you think you're saying? We can discuss those things anywhere. And senpai's still finishing her lunch. Despite all the talking with Arahiko, Senpai finished her rice anyway. No, I understand. Well then, I'll be leaving. Senpai lowers her head in a quick bow and leaves. Only Arahiko and I are at the table. I saw him. Looks like Senpai was having a hard time too, so it was for the best. But looks like you were really pushing it there, Arahiko. Not like I had a choice. Anyways, I guess I'll take the role of the guy she ends up disliking. No, don't do that. Hold on. Uh, uh. Damn, this is empty too. Hold on, I'm about to kill him. Fucking missed. Arhigo slurps away to Shikari Udon. 
It seems to have gone cold while we were talking to Senpai. Sorry. You were trying to hit on Senpai, weren't you? Of course. She's probably the number one girl at our school. But if she's the type to care about something like that, then she's not worth it. Oh yeah, I really do have something to talk to you about in private. Arhigo's voice turned serious. I split my chopsticks with a snap and began to eat my udon. What's wrong? Why so serious all of a sudden? I'll let you know right now that I don't have any money. From the day onwards, I'm going to be living a life with a penniless student. It's not that, damn it. What I want to know is this. What's really going on with you, Tana? What do you mean? You've been at the RMA since primary school, right? I don't know why, but it's been eight years already. Your dad has basically disinherited you. Why is he calling you back all of a sudden? I see. In his own strange way, Arahiko was worried about me. He didn't disinherit me. He just kicked me out the house somehow. Turn off. There was ever a family that kicked their kid out of their house somehow. It's not a tragedy. It's a comedy. Oh, it's a party joke. But it's so boring. It's not funny. Arahiko spreads his arms and shrugs. Yeah, I guess you're right. You get kicked out of the house, all you can really do is laugh. Then he says some cliche line like, never step foot in this house again or something, right? That's what people would call disinheritance. Come to think of it, I've never even heard why you were disinherited. Who knows? That's something I'd like to know too. Well, if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. Grabbing his bow with both hands, Arihiko drains what was left of the Chikari Udon. The time is short. Following Arihiko, I decide to finish my curry Udon. The last class of the day ends. I don't feel like going to the mansion right away, so I just blankly stare out the window overlooking the school grounds. The classroom is dyed orange by the sunset. That's a little too fucking orange. Holy hell. Uh. Well, hell is not holy. My fault. It's like a red watercolor paint and it hurts my eyes. I don't like red. It feels like it soaks deep into the back of my eyes and I want to throw up. It seems I'm weak against things that resemble blood. No, I should say I'm weak against blood itself. Eight years ago, I had a near-death experience. I was in a car accident where, my, where I injured my chest and teetered between life and death for days. I should have died instantly, but miraculously I survived. Maybe it's because of a great medical treatment? However, the injuries were so severe that I don't even remember the accident. Eight years ago, when I was a child, I felt a thud pass right through the middle of my chest and I passed out. When I woke up, I was in a hospital bed. All I could remember to afterwards was the pain and the cold. I don't remember the accident, but even today, the scar on my chest remains. I guess numerous fragments of glass pierced my chest, leaving burn-like scars there and in my back. Actually, I'm quite surprised at being saved. Ever since then, I've frequently collapsed from an uh, anemia-like dizziness and caused a lot of trouble for others. Maybe that's why my old man believed I was unfit to be heir to the Tono household and entrusted me to our relatives. The wound on my chest, huh? The huge scar in the middle of my chest hid it from view by my uniform. Now that I think about it, after that accident was when I started to see those lines. I am able to forget them thanks to the glasses Sensei gave me. But I think I would have gone completely mad if I had never met her. Keiko, the person who had been my mother up until now, said when I left the Tono household wasn't normal. No problem. I'm not a normal person myself. And just in my crooked glasses, I picked up my bag. Can't stay in the classroom forever. Hmm. I hate games like this. Because I'm an indecisive fuckboy. Not, I'm not a fuckboy. I don't fuck boys. I, okay, what was I saying? I hate games like this. Because I'm indecisive. I, I, I can never decide it, what I want to do. I feel like staying in school would like trigger something interesting to happen. So let's do that. Mmm, this is hard. As I step out into the hallway, I run into a familiar face. Noni? What's up, senpai? You have some business here at the second year classrooms? Yes. Business with the second year student, to be precise. 
Shio Senpai approaches me with a smile. Listen, I have some nice snacks here, but no one to talk to. It would be a waste to eat them all by myself, so I came to catch an idle-looking person to talk to. No one to talk to? There's no one left in the classroom. The same with all the other classes, too. You don't usually come to the second cla year classrooms anyway, do you? You're on the lower floor, right? As if she wanted someone, and if she wanted someone to talk to, aren't there plenty of third year classmates she could talk to? How about you stop being dense? She really didn't need to come all the way up here. Shouldn't you think about asking your third year classmates? The conversation will probably be a bit better. Yes, but today I'm in the mood to talk to younger guys. Please don't ask for a reason, it's just on a whim. She wants dick! She wants dick! Bro, she, she's talking about snacks, but she just wants my lollipop. That's it. Well, I won't ask. I probably wouldn't be able to understand even if she told me. Then my smile disappears and she stares into my face. This is probably... I, I, okay, I've only seen two sprites that I like in this game. Like, that I particularly like. This one and that one sprite of that red-haired girl. Where she's looking like... Hold on. Hold on, where is it? Where is it? I fucking love this sprite. I'm gonna be real. This is probably my favorite sprite in any game I've ever played. I keep seeing this. I love this fucking sprite. I love this sprite so much. <laughs> this sprite and that sprite, probably my favorite, my favorite sprites in gaming history. Not gonna lie to you right now. Are you free right now, Tona? Well, if having nothing to do means I'm free, then I'm definitely free. Senpai grabs hold of my sleeve. Well then, you are now caught. Let's go have some tea. Senpai invites me with a smile. No reason for me to decline the offer. And besides, it should be fun talking with Senpai. Sure, I'll come along if it's okay with you. Then it's decided. All right, let's go. Still holding my sleeve, she begins walking down the hall with a light gait. I don't know what that means. Wowza. Our school has a room like this? Could it be for the tea ceremony club? Yes, it's a tea ceremony club room for now. It seems like it hasn't been used up until I came, though. Senpai steps onto... Senpai steps onto... Damn. Senpai steps onto the tatami mat and starts preparation with a rattling noise. Club room, huh? That's the case, won't the other club members be coming? It'd be bad for an outsider like me to be here, right, senpai? It's okay. It may be the tea ceremony club, but there aren't any other members except for me. Thanks to that, I can use it freely during break time and after school. Ah, oh, here we go. Smiling, senpai begins spreading the cushions. Tea is tea. What, tea is tea. But it looks like this is really gonna be some serious tea ceremony. To be honest, I'm a bit overwhelmed. Senpai, I don't have the slightest clue what to do. What are you talking about? I only know I'm to the pouring bit myself. With that blunt reply, Senpai puts the teapot, some cups, and the tea cakes on the plate. We're just gonna have a casual conversation, so it doesn't need to be formal. It isn't any fun that way, is it? Smiling softly, Senpai pours tea into her own cup. Huh. I just don't get you, senpai. Mumbling, I pour my own tea. I slurp some. Picking up the tea cake and putting it in my mouth, I sip again at the tea. I was never involved with it, but the Arama family is a prominent tea ceremony family. Being raised in a household like that, I'm used to drinking tea and doing nothing. Senpai looked at me with a somewhat troubled expression. What's wrong, senpai? You look a bit unhappy. What's wrong, senpai? You look a bit unhappy. Um, I was just a little surprised at how calm you were about this, Tona. Really? Well, my family is a strict one, so I'm used to all these kinds of things. More importantly, Senpai, didn't you have something you wanted to talk to me about? Come on, let's get to talking. I do. That's such an adorable sprite. The continuation of what we were talking about during lunch. What we were talking about during lunch. You mean about my family? Senpai nods to indicate a yes. No, that's the wrong voice. If you don't mind, I would like to hear more about it. Man! 
with a face like this, I would tell you whatever you wanted to know. She's so adorable. I want her, I want her. I was curious about it since we stopped halfway. Not that I mind, but hearing about my family isn't very interesting. It'd be a waste of time. I don't mind if it's not interesting, I just want to hear about it. Sure are eccentric, senpai. Maybe I am. Alright then, let's continue from before. You said you, uh... You said you moved... Okay then, let's continue from before. You said you moved to your home. What do you mean by that? Senpai asked, full of curiosity. Well, the conversation this afternoon must have been pretty fragmented for Senpai since she didn't know any of the circumstances. Let's see. Basically, I'm a guy who's been disinherited. I was seriously injured after getting caught up in a traffic accident when I was nine. Injuries so themselves somehow healed, but after that, I easily collapsed from an anemia and threw up my food. That's why I was entrusted to my relative, the Arima, while I recuperated. Don't whoop my ass. I'm sorry. Don't beat me up. Uh, so, this, it's so silly. Uh, so in other words, the Ari must have been your parents who raised you since you were nine, right? That's right. I knew my old man hated me for some reason, and that once I had been in trouble for the Ari, I thought I would never go back home. Go back to the Tono Mansion, that is. That's why, well, I thought I'd just continue to live, uh, live as a son of the Ari must forever. That's what I thought, but my old man kicked the bucket recently. That nigga died. That's when they told me to return to the mansion now that the old nigga is no longer there. And I finally agreed. And that pretty much is my domestic situation. I end my story like that. Dang, bro. The old nigga died. Mm. But water is so good. I gotta drink that shit. I end my story like that. T.L. Senpai gives a little nod silently. May I just ask one thing? Hmm? Sure, if I can answer it. Go ahead. Alright, then I'll ask. Did you dislike your previous family? Our previous family? The Arimas who had raised me as my parents? My mother and father, who weren't my real parents in the unfamiliar building, which without a doubt was home to strangers. But completely regardless of that, no, I liked them. They were people who didn't care that I was that I wasn't related to them by blood. Uh, they were so warm to me that I felt bad about being depressed all by myself. And for them to love me no matter what, I didn't think it was a bad thing. I was loved by these people. That's why soon, even one day sooner, I had to truly become family to them. I have been telling myself those words since I was young. It's a very, very long time ago. Over and over, I swore till I would practically pass out. Um, uh, just like Arihiko said, I didn't have a single complaint about the Arima family. They treated me well, and I think I responded to their affection too. Between us, even though I knew they were just playing at being a family, even if it was all a knack, I didn't feel any pain. No, I was happy instead. In a way, I had considered the Arima parents and me to be the ideal nuclear family. But it was no good, was it? Oh, but it was no good, was it? Yeah. Despite everything, there was a line I couldn't cross. This isn't your real family. No matter what I did, I couldn't get those words out of my head. I knew I should have been ignoring it, but I just couldn't do it. I don't know if you would call it a childhood experience, but it had become like a curse to me. Somehow, no matter where I was, I felt like a stranger to my own family. Senpai is silent. Avoiding my gaze, she huddles her shoulders apologetically. See? It was boring after all, right? That's why I said it would be a waste of time. Come on, you gotta freaking listen to me, man. I, I, I don't lie. No, that's not true. It was a very meaningful story. Senpai forces a smile to defuse the situation. But it was a little surprising because I had thought of you as an easygoing person. Well, <laughs> what can I say? I basically am a pretty easygoing person. You know, I go pretty easy. It's my personal philosophy to enjoy the present as much as possible. People are happier enjoying what is to come rather than being concerned about what happened before, right? Well, actually, that was an opinion I inherited from our ego. Enjoy what is to come? That sounds nice. 
Senpai sips her tea in a very gentle smile. Then, I follow Senpai's example and place my lips on the cup. With a slurp, the bitter tea washes down my throat with just a hint of sweetness. Unpopular opinion, tea is disgusting to me. Anyways, I walk along a different path than the one I usually take. Passing through unfamiliar streets, I slowly approach the Tonal Mansion. The surroundings are not completely unfamiliar. After all, I had lived here until I was nine years old, eight years ago. It's not the first time I've taken this path back to the mansion. My feelings are a little complex. The path home is nostalgic yet fresh. Up until now, I had not looked forward to the Tonal household. Now it doesn't seem so bad. The house I lived in until I was nine years old. Right now, my sister Akiha is in that utterly un-Japanese Western-style mansion. Tono Makihisa, my old man who hated me and the master of the Tono household died a few days ago. Fucking dumb. My mother died from illness after Akiha was born, so the Tonos had dwindled up down to me and my sister. Being the eldest son, you would think I would stand and become the Tono heir, but I had no such privilege. To become the Tono heir means being bound by a strict upbringing. I've lost count of the number of times my father scolded me over my dislike of not being able to live freely. That was when I got involved in that accident and my body became weakened. My father saw it as a good reason to get rid of me. His reasoning was something along the lines of, Someone who could die at any moment can't become the heir, even if he's the oldest son. Sadly for my father, I betrayed his expectations by making a recovery. And my sister Akiha was already deemed to be the heir of the Tono household. And so I've heard that Akiha, who was already being raised harshly in order to become the proper daughter, received an even harsher upbringing since then. That was a long time ago. I played together with Akiha in the mansion back before the accident. After that, I never saw her again. Poor baby. Apparently, Akio tried to visit me a few times when I was first entrusted to the Arimas. Unfortunately, we were never able to meet because I had to go to the hospital every day. We completely lost contact after Akio went to a boarding school. Unlike Akio, I am isolated from the main family. That's why I can live freely like this. My high school is just an average high school and our chance of contact is pretty much zero. My old man died and I received word telling me to come back. To be blunt, I had no intention whatsoever of returning to the Tano house, but Akiha is at that house. When we were children, Akiha was an obedient child, always looking frightened, as if she were constantly enjoying something. She would always follow close behind, her footsteps pattering behind me. She was frail in her long black hair and fancy western clothes. I'm still fucking up. I like... The recollection? She was frail in her long black hair and fancy western clothes made her resemble a French doll. I'm worried about her living all alone in that big mansion with the old man gone. But more than anything, I feel guilty. After pushing the tone of family responsibilities on her and selfishly living a free life by myself, perhaps my acceptance to return to the mansion is like my apology to Akiha. Just play the image. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. That's nice. Tono Mansion is, is unnecessary. Frick! The Tono Mansion is unnecessarily big. Surrounded by iron railings, you can see the entire lot is abnormally expansive, being so large that a whole elementary school could fit inside. The garden, surrounded by trees, is more like a forest. The mansion is at the heart of the forest, and there are a few other buildings separated from it. The garden, surrounded by trees, is more like a forest. The mansion is at the heart of that forest. There are a few other buildings separated from it. I didn't think anything of it when I was a child, but now that I've lived in an ordinary household for eight years, the excessive size feels almost criminal. The gates aren't locked. I push them open and head toward the mansion doors. The tower oppressively bearing down on any visitors. Beside the iron double doors is an unmatching doorbell. All right. Shaking off my nervousness, I press it. There isn't any affectionate ding-dong chime from the doorbell. The oppressive silence continues for a few seconds. Then the sound of pattering footsteps behind the door indicates someone's presence. We have been waiting for you. 
the door opens with a creak. Inside lay the lobby I remembered and a young girl in an apron. Thank goodness. You're so late I was beginning to worry that you had gotten lost. It's her! Is, is that her? Is that her, the, the girl that does that? That, okay, the girl that does that face? Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on! Is this her? I know she has a twin. I know she has a twin. Is this her? Is this her? Is this her? Hold on. Thank goodness, you're so late. I was beginning to worry that you had gotten lost. I was thinking about going out to meet you if you hadn't arrived by sunset. The girl in it and the cron 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 fucking hell. Apron smiles warmly. Uh, no, that's um, I I'm I'm so taken aback by her outdated mode of dress that I can't even form a proper sentence. What the fuck is that bit? Perhaps attributing my hesitance of to distrust, the girl tilts her head back, tilts her head a little. You are Shiki Sama, aren't you? Yeah, you don't have to call me Sama. Y you are, right? Oh, please don't scare me like that. I was beginning to think I made another mistake back there. The girl's mannerisms are almost like those of a mother scolding her child. But in spite of that, there's a smile on her face and it doesn't break the warm feeling about her. She looks like a sweetheart. She wears an apron over a kimono. She comes out to greet guests and addresses someone like me with Sama. That must mean she's... You wanted a maid by any chance? The girl answered my questions with nothing but a smile. Come, you must be tired. Please do, come in. Akiya Sama is waiting for you in the sitting room. The girl quickly crosses the lobby and heads towards the sitting room. Turning back as if she just remembered something, she makes a bow, a full smile on her face. Welcome home, Shiki Sama. Her greetings is accompanied by a flower like smile. I can't think of a reply, so I just follow her hesitatingly. You so, she's such a she looks like a sweetheart. Guided by the girl, I head to the sitting room. It's as if I'm seeing it for the first time. I don't know if I've forgotten about it in the last eight years or they had it refurbished since then. It feels like someone else's house now, and it's unsettling. As I'm looking around the sitting room, the maid in the apron lowers her head in a quick bow. I brought Shiki Sama with me. Well done. You may return to the kitchen, Koaku. Thank you. It seems that its main name is Koaku. Koaku gives a small bow to say farewell and leaves the sitting room. That leaves me and two girls I don't recognize. Damn, she looks like- Both of them look like they want to whoop my ass! Long ass neck. How your neck longer than mine, fucking giraffe? Uh, what voice should I get? She look mean. She look mean. She look like- she she looked like she do taekwondo, and like she uh, and if you try to like tap her shoulder, she'll break your fingers. So it has been a long time, Nissan. That's a girl with the long black hair and sharp eyes. All my thought processes stop at once. My mind goes blank, and I can't think of words of greeting. All I can do is nod with a yeah. I don't think it can be helped. This Akiha that I had not seen in eight years is not the Akiha I remember. She's completely transformed into a proper young lady of a noble family. Nissan? The black haired girl tilts her head slightly. Ah, uh, pathetically, all I can say are stupid sounding things. My mind is turning in somersaults as I try to recognize the girl before me as Akiha. But it seems like Akiha already recognizes that. Re 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 fuck! Re fuck! recognizes me as her brother. You do not look well. Would you like to rest before we talk? Akiya throws a sharp glance in my direction. Is it just my imagination that she looks like she's in a bad mood? No, I'm good, don't worry about it. Just surprised at how much you've changed, Akiya. People do change over the course of eight years, Nissan. We are at an age of change. Or did you think we would remain the same as we were forever? What the fuck is she talking about? I can feel the thorns in Akiha's words. No, you definitely changed, Akiha. You've become more beautiful than before. That isn't flattery. It's how I really feel. <laughs> Long ass neck. <laughs>
I can't take this bitch serious with that long ass neck, bro. Oh my goodness, dog. Man, indeed. But you, on the other hand, have not changed much at all. I can't as it's close. Fuck. I see her. Uh, fuck. I see. No, not I see. Akiha. Akiha answers coldly, her eyes closed. Oh, well, I can't prepare for something like this. It is as I had thought. It seems Akiha does not think well of me. You are feeling well, let us finish our conversation. You have yet to hear the details about why you were called back here, my son. I've heard nothing more than a simple, come back to the mansion. Though I found that out, find out that my old man, fuck. I ha I've heard, I've heard nothing more than a sudden come back to the mansion. Though I found out the old man died in the papers. I want this image. That might be cool. If the head of a major company dies, it definitely makes the financial papers. Word of Tono Makihisa's death reached his son, Tono Shiki, via the newspaper after the funeral. Even though his relatives hadn't told him, this disinherited son could pick up the news of his father's death merely by buying a 100 yen newspaper. It might be cynical of me to say so, but the world has certainly become a convenient place. I am sorry. It was my fault that you did not get the news of father. Akiya quietly lowers her head. It's alright. Either way, it's not like he will come back from the dead if I win. It's not, like, it's not something you should worry about. It's not something you should be worried about. I am sorry. It is somewhat comforting to hear you say that. Akiya's face is serious, but this is not a topic I care much about. A funeral is a ceremony for those who can't let go of their feelings, for the deceased to achieve such detachment. For someone like me who cut off such feelings a long time ago, there is no need. Calling you back here was my idea. It would be odd for the eldest son of the Tonos to be entrusted to the Arimus forever. Now that father has passed away, the only Tonos by blood are you and I. I don't know what father was thinking when he entrusted you to the Arimus, but he's no longer with us and there's no longer any need for you to live with him. That is why I had you come back here. That's all well and good, but I'm surprised you were able to get our relatives to agree to this. Wasn't it they who came up with the idea of leaving me with the Arimus in the first place? That may be so, but now I am the head of the Tono family. I declined every one of the proposals from my relatives. I would like you to continue living here, but this is a place with rules. You will avoid living the overly casual lifestyle you've been leading up until now. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid that's, that's not gonna happen, Akiha. There's no way I can go back to being some well-mannered gentleman now. Not that I want to. I will not ask. I will not ask more of you, but do try to. Or are you saying you're unable to do what I already have? Akira shoots me a cold look. Shut your ass up! Feels like she's hitting me with her grudge against me for leaving her here for the last eight years. This is adorable. I want this. Okay. All right. I get it. I'll try. Kinda. Akira just stares at me as if she doesn't quite believe me. You shouldn't believe me. I'm lying. You do not need to try as long as you get the results. Her pose is dignified, her words merciless. Let's get back to the topic. Right now, you and I are the only ones living here. I do not care for having too many people around, so I cleared everyone out. Huh? H hold on, Akiha. You cleared everyone out? You wouldn't want to run into one of our relatives in the. You wouldn't want to run into one of our relatives in the mansion, would you? I have put off most of the servants, but there are enough for you and I, so there are no problems. Wait, no problem. You're gonna get attacked at our family meeting if you do something like that. Oh, please be quiet. Rather than have the mansion overflowing with people, wouldn't you feel more relaxed with just the two of us here? She's actually a sweetheart. She's not gonna break my fingers, maybe. Well, it's true that I would be, feel relaxed, but... You've only just become head of the family, Akiha. If you go around abusing your powers like some kind of dictator, our relatives are not going to keep quiet. Even the old man didn't go against their opinions. Indeed. That's why father entrusted you to the Arimus. I, on the other hand, have despised them ever since I was a child. I am not going to put up with their whining any longer, bitch-ass niggas. Not going to put up with- Look, Akiha! Ah, enough! Just listen! You don't have to worry about me. 
Please, just worry about your own life from now on. I can see it's gonna be difficult for you in many ways. Akia says sullenly as if looking away. Look at FUCK! Akia says sullenly looking away a bit. Now then, if there's anything you don't understand, ask her, Hisu. Oh, she looks like she stabs people. You gonna stab me? She's gonna stab me, bro. Kobe! I missed, okay. Alright, this one might actually kind of overflow. I'm a thirsty boy. I keep water on deck. Hold on. I'm a thirsty boy. I keep water on deck. Pull up to the... Now then, if there's anything you don't understand, ask her, Hisui. She looks at the girl standing by her side. The girl called Hisui bows expressionlessly. This is Hisui. She will be your personal maid from now. I want Kohaku. She looks like a sweetheart. Is that acceptable? The fuck? Hold on, personal maid? You mean... In other words, she's your servant. Akiha declares as if it were obvious. I can't believe it. Fitting with the western side of the house, the girl in the maid outfit stands there as if it is natural to do so. Hold on. I'm not a kid, you know. I don't need a servant. I can take care of myself. Would that include the cooking and laundry? Ah, oh, you bitch. Aki is pretty sharp at pointing these things out. What kind of man don't know how to cook? At any rate, now that you've returned to the household, you will obey my direction. I don't know how you know that they are in my house, but you're living at the Tono house now. Please accept everything that is given to you. I can't say anything and my eyes drift towards Hisu. As expected, she simply looks back at me expressionless like a dog. Well then, Hisu, please show Nissan to his room. Yes, my lady. What voice should I give her? Yes, my lady. Hold on. Yes, my lady. There you go. Yes, my lady. Hisui approaches me with a shadow-like lack of presence. I will guide you to your room, Shiki-sama. Hisui heads toward the lo lo lobby. Sighing, I head off toward the lobby as well. We enter the lobby. <laughs> Except lobby three fucking times in a row. This mansion is split in the east and west wings, with the lobby in the middle four times in a row. The lobby five times in a row. It's like a body of a bird whose wings are the halls extending diagonally to the east and west. Each wing is about the size of a hospital. I remember the house being constructed symmetrically, so both the east and west wings have the same floor plan. Your room is this way, Shiki. Sama. He usually climbs a flight of stairs. It seems like my room is on the second floor. Come to think of it, the servant's room should be on the first floor of the west wing. So that's probably where Hisu and your Kohaku rooms are. This looks like a fucking hospital. Outside, the sun is already set. The girl in the maid uniform walks down the long, dimly lit hallway without a word. Kinda feels like a wonderland. Without thinking, I let my thoughts slip out. Did you say something, Shiki? Did you really sit there and say that dumbass shit, Shiki-sama? I'ma check your ass if you say that stupid ass shit again. That was stupid. He so he stops and looks back at me. No, I'm just talking to myself. Don't worry about it. After staring at me, he so he bows and starts walking again. She's got that doubt. <laughs> got that. Alright, Dan. She was scared the fuck out of me. I guess this is what they call being at a loss for words. The room he so he led me to was not one made for a mere high school student to live in. Is this my room? Yes. If you are displeased with it, I can arrange a different one for you. Nah, there's no way I could be displeased with it. It's, uh... It's a little... No, it really is. It's too fancy for me. Shiki someone? It's fine. I'll gladly use this room. Yes. This room has not been touched since eight years ago. So I do not believe you will find anything unsatisfactory with it. Not touched? Has it been cleaned at least? There's something a little odd about the way he said set that. As if she was implying that this was once my room. Hey, is this by any chance my old room? That is what I have been told. Oh, that's cute. That's a cute little sprite. Am I mistaken? 
peacefully inclines her head to the side slightly. I feel relieved. It seems this girl can't express her emotion after all. Well, it might be now that you mention it. I do remember it faintly, so it must be so. I can't feel any sense of familiarity about this place at all. But I guess that's what it's like after you leave a place for eight years. I can't get settled here, though. I was living in a six and a half mat sized room until this morning. It's like I'm staying in some high class hotel. I understand how you feel, but please try to get used to it. From today onward, you are the eldest son of the Tono house. You're right. Gotta do my best so I at least look like it on the outside. With a thump, I drop my bag on the table and stretch my back. I've been feeling a little stressed out with everything that's happened so far, but I guess I've got no choice but to adjust from today onwards. Cheeky-sama, all of your luggage has been brought here. Is there anything more you require? Nah, not really. Why do you ask? There's very little, there was very little delivered. If there's anything you need, I can have it prepared, so please do not hesitate to ask. I see. No, I don't need anything more for now. I didn't have much luggage to begin with. My luggage is just this bag, these glasses, and textbooks in my bag, and that white ribbon with the unidentified owner. That's all. Anyway, you don't gotta worry about the luggage. This fancy room is more than enough for me. I understand. Well then, I shall come to you in an hour's time. An hour? For dinner, you mean? Yes. Please, relax until then. As expected, he still says everything with an expression on his face. But even if she tells me to relax, just how am I supposed to do that here? The clock says six o'clock. It's already dark outside at just six? Usually I'll be watching TV in the sitting room around this time. But I'm having serious doubts as to whether there's any such thing in this mansion. Isui, you know it's kind of a trivial thing to ask about, but is there a television in this mansion? A television? Isui's eyes narrow slightly. I know I'm the one who asks, but it really is a stupid question. I feel that like there's something wrong with asking about the presence of a TV in a luxurious mansion like this. Isui makes a rare troubled face and stares off into space. question too hard i got i gotta take a picture of this i'm sorry some of these sprites are just so funny bro i asked if we had a tv and she just she just folded <laughs> these we makes a rare troubled face and stare off into space there is no television in the sitting room some of the visitors did make use of one but when they departed they packed it up with their luggage and took it back with them so i do not believe there are any remaining the f Nigga, they stole the television? Visitors? Who? For how long? Relatives. The eldest son of the Kugamine Sama. Eldest son of Kugamine Sama from the branch from the branch of from a branch of the family. Kozaki Sama's third daughter, her fiance, and the Kishima Sama's and Kishima Sama's eldest son came to stay for close to three years. Three years, huh? Hisui. That's what you call freeloaders, not visitors. Isui does not reply. <laughs> no matter what kind of people these freeloaders were, it seems the servants can't, servants can't say anything bad about them. But they stole the fucking TV? Bro! No wonder she kicked their ass out. They stole they stealing shit. They go freeloading our crib. And then start and then and then steal our TV like some crackhead homeless uncle, bro. Don't make no damn sense. Well, at any rate, it seems like those relatives have brought and taken back their own luggage with them. Oh, it was their TV. How the fuck? How, how y'all homeless and freeloaded at another nigga crib, but got TVs and televisions and shit and cable? The fuck? My old man hated the products of modern culture, thinking them all vulgar. There was no way he would ever watch a TV. Akiha, who had been educated by him for the last eight years, would probably be the same. Well, it's not like I'll die without one. Isui is silent. 
like a perfect example for servants. He usually has nothing to say unless she is being asked a direct question. That is, of course, kind of depressing for me. I want to make that expression on his face break into a smile somehow, but that seems impossible with just any old half-hearted effort. Oh, there was a library in the first floor of the West Wing, wasn't there? Maybe I'll go find something to read when I have some free time. Yisui does not reply. She just stands there in the doorway. I can't even tell where she's looking. Yisui? Yisui doesn't say a word. Suddenly, she looks straight at me. I believe there is one in Nason's room. Huh? I have no idea what she's talking about. Uh, th there's one of what? A television. I remember seeing one in Nason's room. Yisui says as if remembering something from many years. She was thinking! <laughs> she was thinking! That's why! She was sitting there like... Oh yeah, there was a TV, huh? <laughs> she, she's a little slow, I see. Okay, that's fine. Hold on. Nason, you talking about Kohaku? Yes. Right now, the only people working at this mansion are Nason and I. Now that she mentioned it, they do look alike. Nigga, they look like twins. I couldn't, I just couldn't connect them as sisters because Kohaku was always smiling so warmly and Isui's always expressionless. I see. Kohaku does look like the type of person who'd watch those variety shows. But I balk at going in, going to Kohaku's room to tell her, let me watch your TV. Sorry, just forget I ever asked. After all, I'll be living here from now on, so I've got to follow the rules of the mansion. God knows what sort of cynical comment I'd be in from Akiha if I started watching television. It seems I'll be leading a scholarly student life fit for a member of the Tono family from now on. Alright, I'll be at my room until dinner, so just come in and call me when it's time. You've got other things to do, don't you, Hisui? Hisui nods in accent, then turns around. Silently opening the door, she leaves the room. Dinner takes place with Akiha and I being face to face. Damn, I've already been recording for 40 minutes. Dinner takes place with Akiha and I being face to face. I guess it's natural here, as Hisui and Kohaku do not eat with us, standing behind us to tend to our needs. I thought it would be natural if all four of us ate together, so you can say I am caught off guard by this inexplicably tense dinner. I should mention at this point that I've totally forgotten anything related to table manners by now. Well, I do remember little pieces, so it's not like I'm a complete amateur, but humans tend to pack away unused memories into the corners of their mind. The tension was actually quite thrilling, with every one of my movements causing Akiha to raise an eyebrow. When I think about how I have to go through this every day, though, it's really depressing. Finishing dinner, I return to my room. It's still only just past eight at night. It's too early to sleep, so what should I do? What should we do? Let's watch TV in Kohaku's room. Let's go watch TV. Let's see, Kohaku's room is right here, isn't it? Knock, knock. I knock on her door. Kohaku, are you there? Are you there? Yes, please, hold on for a minute. I can hear a cheerful voice from inside the room. I wait for about three minutes. She opens the door and pokes her head out. Oh, it's you, Shiki-sama. What are you doing here at this time? Well, uh, I was wondering if you'd let me watch your TV. Huh? Baku gives me a bewildered look. Oh, uh, well, there's no TV in this house, is there? I've been living in a normal house up until now, so it's become daily routine for me to watch TV after dinner. I guess I can't calm down without watching it or something like that, so... The more I say it, the more I realize I'm doing something stupid. There's something not right about barging into a lady's room demanding to watch her TV. I'm not demanding, I'm politely requesting, okay? If she says no, I'll simply walk back to my room like a respectable man. Look, even she's standing there looking, but wait, no she's not. What the fuck? <laughs> wait. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, I guess you're right. You've been living at the R in my household up until now after all. You must think this mansion to be some kind of depressing after moving here all of a sudden. Kohaku gives a cheerful laugh. Let's see, have you talked to Akiha and Hisui about this yet? You mean about coming to your room? Kohaku nods. No, I haven't talked to anyone about it yet. What about it? No, no, it's nothing. 
It's just that I would have to turn you away if you had already talked to them about it. Smiling while she speaks, Glauco looks up and down the hallway. Luckily for us, there isn't anyone else around. Please hurry up and come in. It'll be troublesome if we're caught. Oh, she's a little rebellious. Please, she sit anywhere. I'll go make some tea. Coughing to clear my throat, I take a seat. There are all sorts of little things in Kawaku's room. It might be a bit messy for her girl's room. But there aren't really many things you could call cute. And what she does have are a lot of things that don't look very useful. Rather, as the atmosphere of a room belonging to an orderly scholarly person. Buried in the miscellaneous objects, I find the TV. On top of the table is the remote. Maybe Koaku had been watching TV up until just now. Thanks for waiting. Tea is fine for you, isn't it, Shikisama? Thank you. Please, don't mind me too much. Oh, not at all. I'm sorry I can't do much to treat you. Kohaku says so, smiling warmly. So the TV... Uh, what do you watch around the... Oh, fuck! So the TV... What do you watch around this time, Shikisama? I don't have any set programs in particular, but the news is a pretty basic one. I like to hear about, I like to hear new trends and I like the snob stories. Is that so? You seem like a very laid back person, so I thought you'd be reading after dinner or something. Nah, I don't have such refined interests. I don't consider myself laid back either, but maybe that's the impression I give with my glasses. Oh, that's adorable. Hold on, I need to- I'm over here fangirling about fucking video sprites. See, now- My ancestors are looking down at me right now saying, what the fuck is this nigga issue? My great-grandfather, who fought in World War II, is looking down at me right now like, this nigga is a disappointment. <laughs> ah, you wear glasses, Shigisama? Akira didn't say anything about that at all, so I was quite surprised when I saw you at the door. I see. I haven't met Akira since I started wearing those glasses. These glasses are just for show. I guess you could say my eyes are bad, but I think my vision is better than that of most people. It's not because I studied too much and went nearsighted or anything. Dear Lord, banging on, ringing the doorbell like that is so annoying. Wait, hold on. Let me let me let me reread all of that. Ah, uh, you wear glasses, Shiki Sama? Akira Sama didn't say anything about that at all, so I was quite surprised when I saw you at the door. I see. I haven't met Akira since I started wearing these glasses. These glasses are just for show. I guess you could say my eyes are bad, but I think my vision is better than that of most people. It's not because I studied too much and went nearsighted or anything. Oh crap. I had an intellectual image, but did I disappoint you? My dad's here, so I can't, I can't fan girl. Not at all. I enjoy watching TV more than reading too. I'm glad that you're an energetic person, just like I thought you were. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> Face directly with Koaku's carefree smile. I can't help but feel a little nervous. So far, her and Shield Senpai are my favorite ones. I like them the most. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You came to watch the news, didn't you? Gohaku switches the TV on. It's already 9 o'clock. The news, as it usually does, reports the day's events with a little exaggeration. Oh dear. Looks like there's been another one of those serial murders. Gohaku says to herself while sitting next to me, sounding not the least bit concerned. She's the killer! <laughs> the news is running a special feature on the serial killings. The serial murders which began in the neighboring town are now beginning to be concentrated within this town. It's a pretty simple story. Late at night, he attacks young girls indiscriminately, and in the end, he drains their blood. Why are we assuming it's a man? Come on, it's kind of, it's kind of misandrist. That's the word, right? Misandrist? It seems like last night's victim is the ninth one so far. Dang, he got bodies. I wonder what the police are doing about it. I can't tell who's saying what. I wonder what the police are doing about it. Who knows? 
It would seem pretty easy to catch a murderer who comes out at night, but maybe he's really careful so they can't trace him? You could be right. The clues about murderers build up as they kill more people. So if they haven't caught him even after nine murders, he must be really carefully prepared for the killing. A careful killer, huh? But aren't these killings spontaneous crimes? It's quite strange to think of them as think of them as being carefully prepared. You're right. If there's no evidence left at all, then maybe he's not a random killer at all. I can only think that he's got it all planned out from the start of execution. I see. But then what would be the point of killing those nine girls? Are they friends of his? Acquaintances? Probably not. If there were connections like that, then I think the police would have realized it by now. In the end, I suppose it's, incom it's an incomprehensible case without motive or connection. Kawaku says all this disturbing stuff with a smile. <laughs> it seems she's not really worried about this case. She's the killer! These murders are happening right here in this town, Kohaku. You're a young girl and all, so aren't you even a little scared? I'll be fine since the killer only appears late at night. If I don't go out at night, I won't run into him. Kohaku really is a clear thinker. It is perhaps a bit of a raw explanation, but I suppose that's how a mere news story should be treated. Sorry for intruding on you. I'll be counting on you again next time I feel like watching TV. Sure, I'll be waiting. Kohaku looks up and down at the, down the live the hall. Bah! The lo the, 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 bah! Nah! the hallway. I'd like to escort you back to your room, but Hisui is waiting there, so I'll have to say goodbye here. Okay. Good night. I had no idea bedtime at this mansion was at 10. You got a bad time. Apparently there's some kind of unwritten rule here that one is not to be out of their room by pretend. It's still so formal here, leaving with the old man guard. I guess it's only natural. I'm also getting tired of my unfamiliarity with this mansion, so I obediently return to my room. Ah. Uh, when I turn to my room, my bed has been made. Did Hisui do it while I was away? I'm glad she did, but it's really more than I deserve. I scratch my cheek, then... Are you there, Shiki-sama? I can hear Hisui's voice along with a knock at the door. Yeah, I'm here. Come in. Excuse me. Good evening. Thanks for making my bed, Hisui. Hisui quietly nods and accepts it. Uh, this is I thought I'm not used to this. Is there anything else you want to tell me? No, nothing from me, but Aki has instructed me to answer any questions you may have. Okay. There are many things I want to ask, but I'll probably get to know them as I continue living here. Yeah, what I want to know right now before I sleep. Is it true that the curfew here is 7? Yes. The main gate is locked at 7, and all the entrances to the mansion are to be locked at 8. It is also a rule that one must one must try not to go walking around the mansion after 10. Not even walking around the mansion? I've got no complaint with that, but isn't that kind of harsh? Akiya and I are children, so I don't think you have to go that far. Indeed. It is a rule, however, so please abide by it. You are aware of the recent disturbances at night, are you not, Shiki Summer? Yeah, that vampire thing Arihiko was talking about. Well, as long as something like that is happening, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. What else? Uh, do you mind if I ask an off-topic question? Yes, what is it? I'd like to know what kind of work you and Kohaku do around here. I'm here to serve Shiki-sama's needs, and my sister Kohaku is to serve Lady Akiha. In our spare time, we do the maintenance chores around the mansion. Is there anything more you'd like to know? To serve. So that's what it is after all. My shoulders suddenly feel heavier. It seemed completely natural to Akiha when she said it, but I'm nothing more than a normal high school student. I'm no interest in having a girl around my age serving me, at least not for now. By serving me, you mean you're my personal servant? Yes. Please do not hesitate to ask anything of me. Well, I get it. Going by how Akiha was talking about you, it doesn't seem like I can dismiss you, so I'll just obediently let you serve me. Is there anything in particular you would like? Bounce on it. <laughs> no! No! Stop! Zeke, stop! No! I messed up! Hold on! Uh, uh, wait, I'm doing too much! I'm doing too much! 
doing entirely too much. I, I, I'm gonna mess up the recording by being extra and goofy. Nothing in particular, but could you stop calling me Shiki something? Please do. It feels so weird to read. I don't. The, 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 what, what are they called? The, are they called sir? No, 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 not surnames. Um. Sir, 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 something. I don't know. But like the Sama, the Chan, the um San. Well, San is okay. Chan is okay too. But Sama specifically, like man, it, it just feels so weird for me to read, man. Nothing in particular. But could you stop calling me Shiki Sama? To be honest, I get chills on my spine when I hear it. But Shiki Sama, you are my master. That's what I'm saying, I hate. I've been living a normal life up until yesterday. I've no desire to start living a life where a girl my age addresses me as Sama. I see. Hisu's response was less than enthusiastic. Just call me Shiki, and in exchange I'll call you Hisu. Let's do away with the formalities and be more casual with each other. Still expressionless, Hisui lowers her eyebrows as if she's being troubled. But you are my employer. It's not like I hired. It's not like I'm hiring you. You're the one doing things I can't. So you're the great one. I see. He usually gives another unenthusiastic reply. It looks like I won't be able to talk her into it just one day. Anyhow, that's how it is. Don't be so formal towards me. I'll be grateful of you if you tell that to your sister, Kuaku, too. Very well, as you say, Shiki-sama. Expressionless, Hisui bows her head and says it again. She completely fails to understand. I'll be leaving now. Please, rest it, rest now for the night. Bowing, Hisui puts her hand on the doorknob. Oh, I forgot to ask something. Hold on for a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Running towards the door, I put my hand on Hisui's shoulder before she leaves. In an instant, Hisui's arm pushes away my arm with incredible momentum on with a whack, she slaps my hand away and leaps back. Ah, dang, my fault, what did I do? It's so sudden, that's the only thing I can say. Hisui is expressionless, but glares at me fiercely. Ah, did, did I do something wrong? I am very sorry, you sound very nervous. I'm not used to being touched, please forgive me. Hisui's shoulders are faintly trembling. I feel like I should do something really terrible. Yeah, my fault, my fault. Look, I apologize without thinking. I don't understand why myself. I just feel sorry for Hisui and I lower my head. Hisui says nothing. I get the feeling her stare is calm again. You have nothing to apologize for, Shiki-sama. I'm the one to blame. No, well, maybe, uh, but, but I just, uh, 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 shut up. I scratch my head. Hisui stares at me, pausing only to blink for a second. What was it you wanted to ask me, Shiki-sama? That's right. I stopped it because I wanted to ask her something. Okay, I wanted to ask about Akiha. Doesn't she go to a boarding school? That was only during middle school, Shiki-sama. From this year onward, Ara Akiha has special permission to attend school from home. It means she goes to school from here. Yes, but it is uncommon for her to come home before dusk like today. Aki has practice up until dinner, so she's always home before 7. Practice? Practice what? Today is Thursday, so she would have violin practice. Huh? Usually she is able to return before dinner on weekdays. If you have- if so- ah! I can't read! Usually she is able to return- Ha! Usually she is able to return before dinner on weekdays. So if you have anything to say to Akiha, please let Nei sign up before dinner. Isui bows to say goodbye and leaves the room. Violin practice? What on earth is that? She's not some upper class lady or anything, so why would she have to do something as bothersome as. Oh! She is an upper class lady! I forgot. Yes! Come to think of it, my sister, Tono Akiha, is a natural-born upper-class lady. In my memory, she was always the obedient, ever-uneasy sister who would always follow me around. As a child, Akiha was always quiet, never having the courage to express her own desires. 
It was a frail girl who would always live in fear of a scolding from her father. Yeah, people really do change after eight years. After eight years, I've become the me I am today. Aki has become the Aki hub right now, too. Eight years is a long time. It's half of our lives up until now. I was absent from this mansion during that vital period where a child becomes an adult. I'm sorry, Aki. I think things would have been better if I had been with her during those eight years. I unconsciously mumbled an apology. Left by myself, I lie on my bed. This house from eight years ago. My blood relative from eight years ago. It feels a little like they belong to someone else. Wonder what's gonna happen to me now. Groveling and knowing in particular, I fall asleep. Ah ooh. I hear the wave like sound of someone's voice. Ah woo! Someone is hot something is howling. Oh! Oh! Ah woo! Something is howling. It's too sharp and hard, high pitched to be a straight dog. Ah uh, woo! We got freaking werewolves in here? Is this Twilight? No, Twilight has vampires. Wait, did Twilight have werewolves too? I don't know. I never watched it or read it. I, I, think, I think my sister did though. It echoes in my eardrums. Is it howling at the moon? Ah uh, woo! This doesn't feel right. The beastly howling is beginning to give me a headache. Ah, uh, shut up! Finna go shoot that dog, bro. It doesn't stop. Ah, uh, woo! Ah, uh, woo! Ah, uh, woo! Ah, just shut up already! Where's the shotgun? I wake up. I can hear the sound of a dog barking outside the window. The clock indicates that it's just past 11. This is more than just a neighborhood nuisance. Damn, I can't sleep like this. The dog's howling comes from somewhere near the mansion's fence. It doesn't seem like I can go back to sleep at this rate. Even Akiha and the others wouldn't be able to sleep with a racket like this. If I'm the only man in the house, I guess I've got no choice but to investigate. I think it's coming from the right side of the mansion. I open the curtains and check what's happening outside. And outside my room is a large tree. One of the branches is perched a blue crow. Oh, shit. Get the fuck out of me. <laughs> In the dark night, I see nothing but a nothing but black. And yet it's quite clear to me that this crow is blue. I've never seen or heard anything of a blue crow before. It glares at me. It feels like the eyes of the crow are staring at me, like soulless mechanical lenses. Ah! After a yawn like crying, it noisily it noiselessly flies off. What the freak was that? I can feel a faint chill on my back. The howling of the dog grows louder. Ah woo! Ah woo! Ah woo! It's really starting to get on my nerves. Not only is it noise, but hearing it causes my heart to start pounding. I have an almost instinctual distaste for it. Shut up! I change up my pajamas into my uniform and leave the room. Pass the shotgun, I'm gonna shoot this dog, bro. Ah, uh, woo! The howling echoes through the night. The sun is definitely coming from the right-hand side of the mansion. For some reason, my throat feels dry. Let me fix that right quick. Water. Gotta drink that. The high wall stretched away around the mansion. Clearing my throat, I head toward the dog where the dog must be gathered. I arrive at where the howling originates. Huh? Ah, woo! The howling doesn't stop, but there's no signs of any dogs. All there is is a person. Under the light from the street light that carves apart the darkness stands a man in a dark coat. The howling is coming from right beside him, but there are no dogs to be seen anywhere. The man in the coat is pretty tall. He has a strongly built body and his back is facing me. My throat is so dry. Ah, woo! The voice of the dog resounds in my ears. The night air coils itself around my skin. 
no apparent reason, I have difficulty breathing and moving, as if I'm at the bottom of the sea. God! I cry overhead. With a loud flapping of his wings, the blue crow lands on the man's shoulder. Then suddenly the crow vanishes. Huh? Can it be an illusion? It looked like the crow disappeared into his black coat. The man in the black coat turns around. Uh oh! Get out of there! Get out of there! Run! Bro, this is. This is a demon! That's a demon! Run! The man in the black coat turns around. Under the white street light, he is just like a shadow. A black lump. In the middle of that lump, only the weapon like eyes shine out, burning with the fiery intelligence. Look, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now what I would do. I will tell you right now what I would do. When the man gets um Gojo Satoru and, and, and cut in half, after that I'ma just you know just shine it a bit, you know, make sure it's clean. You feel me? That's what I would do in the situation. That is a demon. Look at his eyes. He has hatred in his eyes. He has hatred in his eyes. He looks like if we breathe incorrectly, his claws will be sink into our throat. He's gotta be evil. He's some type of demonic monster. Ah, uh, uh, I can't breathe. But fortunately, those eyes seem like they're not even looking at me. Not here after all. The man in the black coat leaves. Coat leaves. When I can no longer see him, I'm finally able to breathe properly again. Ah. <sighs> I managed to take a few deep breaths. I realized that dog's howling had ceased. I returned to my room. No sign of Akiha or the others being awake. I guess I'm the only one who couldn't stand the dog's howling. Gah, what's happening? My head still hurts. Huh? Why am I trembling? Looking down, my fingers are trembling. My entire body is shaking and my back feels cold. It's almost like, yeah, like someone ripped up my spine and replaced it with ice. I feel dizzy. Is it just the usual anemia? I get the feeling of falling toward the floor. On the way, I see something unpleasant. What? Even though I'm wearing my glasses, I can still see the lines. I, I hadn't seen them. In I hadn't seen them all for a long time, so my reaction is magnified. I feel sick. With the dizziness from my anemia, I feel like I'm about to throw up the contents of my stomach. What's going on? I don't understand. Only that as long as my eyes are open, scribbles fly everywhere across my vision. It's a bad dream. Somehow I managed to collapse into bed. Yes, I should sleep. That's, that's the easiest way to deny what I'm seeing. My body doesn't move as I want it to. All I should do is lie here and fall fast asleep like a corpse. Wowza! Okay. Saving memory seven. Okay. That is hard. Okay. Man, I am interested in this. Hold on, bro. This is getting crazy. This is getting mad crazy, bro. That was chapter one. Who the freak is that demon werewolf monster that pulled up? And like, why are the glasses not working? I don't, not enough has happened for me to talk about it, but you know, the best I can do, Akiha definitely just misses her older brother. She really wants to see us. Um, he so we has some type of trauma. I don't know. You know how these Japanese games be, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if her backstory was like somebody forced themselves on her. You know, the, like these, a lot of these older Japanese games just obsessed with like, having characters, having female characters getting raped and stuff. I don't know why, but they're, they're just obsessed with that like plot line for some reason. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened, but we'll find out. Kohaku and um, what's her face? 
Kohaku and Seal, they're my favorite characters so far. I really like them, the sweethearts. So far, they're my favorite characters. But that's the end of this episode and that's the end of this chapter. If y'all enjoy, like, subscribe, leave a comment, I read them all, tap into the next one. I'll probably try to group this in with the with the episode before this. Since it wasn't it wasn't all that longer. It went, the chapter one wasn't all that wasn't as long as I initially thought it would be. But peace out, I love y'all.